There was a time when uh, traveling in space was considered a very, very risky job and task. And um, it seems like the public has uh, for, forgot it's still a very risky, uh, uh, very risky mission. Uh, you have lost many close friends uh, who just disappeared in explosions of the space shuttle. Yeah. What's uh, you know? Give us a, give us an idea. What, what are the critical moments in, uh, in on a space takeoff or landing, and when when are things sort of shake can be critical? Well, I mean, you bring up good points um, about risk. I mean, in a way, life is a risk, right? There's always risks involved in your life, and you make choices and you try to minimize the risks as much as you can, but know that there are some things you have to accept if you want to move forward, if you want to learn, if you want to explore, um, if you want to, you know, gain new knowledge, risk is always involved. And that's the same with spaceflight. Um, spaceflight is still a risky business. Um, and I think uh, we've looked at it maybe a little lackadaisical now where people just say well you know back in the day you know the Apollo astronauts the right stuff it was bad but you know now the shuttle but as you know we lost two shuttle crews um, and uh, you know we used to think okay well after we lost uh, Challenger it was it was ascent it was the solid rocket boosters and the foam and in and, and the shuttle and we tried to fix that and we, we thought we had but then the next crew that we lost was on descent, return to Earth. And that was because of a problem on ascent where the foam hit and put a hole in the wing and they didn't know. And when they returned in, you know, the, the wing eroded away from the shuttle. And uh, very unfortunate, very sad. Uh, like you said, lost, lost some friends. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we must continue to explore space space program must continue to go on in an international space program um, because I think it's the um, I don't want to say well I will I'll say destiny of our species as Stephen Hawking said uh, Carl Sagan said many people have said the the Drake equation uh, professor is that we need to explore and eventually we need to leave this planet uh, it's where we started as a species it was our cradle but at some point you leave the cradle and um, you know uh, we can't stay on this planet forever because this planet will not last forever. Uh, and we've already been hit twice by large impactors, large asteroids. Uh, otherwise, you and I might be sitting here now as intelligent reptiles, dinosaurs, rather than mammals. Um, and so I think it's important that people understand that there is an impetus to learning how to live and journey into space because ultimately it will protect our whole species. And people have their daily lives and they don't think about it. And it's just, that's uh, esoteric. But if you go back in the timeline, you can see that we've had mass extinctions. And a lot of those, uh, or like I said, a lot, two of them have been because of impacts from space. So we need to learn how to control our weather, our space weather around our planet in terms of someday figuring out how to deflect large asteroids or you know bodies that may come in contact with the planet and perhaps someday learning how to leave the planet and colonizing and I do believe that you know someday uh, people will be born on Mars as colonists and they will be Martians they will be not they will not be earthings they will be Martians so the first Martians that will exist in terms of our timeline will be humans and I think that will be the beginning of it moon to Mars and then from there, we finally protect, uh, um, I guess, uh, well, it won't happen. Unfortunately, it won't happen for a while. But eventually, I think we will figure out how to, how to move faster than light. In the meantime, ion drives, propulsions, chemical rockets, they're not going to work for long distances. We're going to have to figure out new methods of propulsion, plasma, ion, whatever, to get us to the outer planets, eventually to our solar system. Uh, and who knows, you know, there's always the naysayers that say it can't be done and we'll never do it. 
but uh, if everyone thinks even, if you're sitting here right now listening to this podcast, think back 20 years into your past, and then think about what you had then in terms of technology, and now what you have. It's basically handheld computers, smartphones, uh, advanced rockets, advanced airplanes, uh, your cars are being, coming to the point where they can drive themselves. I mean, technology has made these am amazing leaps just in 20 years. So flash forward, if you, if you can imagine this, to a thousand years from now, what will we have learned? Uh, there is a saying that, um, you know, um, uh, an ancient man's uh, science to an ancient man would be no different than magic. So can you think about a thousand years from now, the technology and the science that's evolved, it would be magic to us. And maybe we've at that point learned how to travel close to the speed of light or surpass the speed of light. And at that point, I think that's when we break away and we're able to colonize and explore deep space. Because the distances now are so vast that we can only imagine even about going into our solar system.